be speaking a bit longer, which is a fantastic opportunity because there's so much happening at Commerce Bank with APIs that I'm sure you'll appreciate that extra time um, and I know our audience will. Um, thanks, Nathaniel. Do you want to share your screen? Yes, sure. Let me... I was saying earlier, I love what Commerce Bank is doing. There's a really interesting model you've got where you've got the, a, the PSD2 APIs, but then you've also got a partnership program to be offering APIs uh, to work more with select partners to be able to build new products with your... So it's not just about meeting regulatory requirements, it's about really building out the ecosystems. Yeah, that is that is true. I mean, PSD2 um, kind of led us to an API program, but we always thought to make something bigger out of that to um, benefit um, in both sides. So um, for our customers to offer better service and, as services and to be closer with them, and also obviously for us as Commerce Bank um, to be to to get, gain new profits here. Yep, sure. I'll step off the stage. I'm excited to hear your your presentation and we'll uh, join again for a chat at the end. All right. And my presentation can be seen, right? I think that is a yes. All right. Um, so hello, everybody. Um, last year, I've been to API Days Paris in Paris. This year, I'm in API Days Paris and Frankfurt which is great, I think, uh, that we have those technical opportunities to um, meet and share all our thoughts and information here. My name is Nathaniel. Um, I'm a chapter lead in Commerce Bank and API Cluster. The API Cluster is, an, is a team of 80 people enthusiastic about APIs. And I work here on API strategy, on open banking and ecosystems, obviously, and on partnering, as Mark already mentioned, and thought leadership. So who is Commerce Bank? Commerce Bank is Germany's second largest bank with around 8.6 billion euros of revenue, 48,000 employees, 11 million clients and 800 branches. Um, and the interesting question is why am I today talking to you and why are we dealing with this topic of open banking and ecosystems? Well, you all know that um, our customer interactions and relationships are transforming. And I brought you the four um, most important ones uh, for us as a bank. Um, nowadays, customers have power, it's not the companies anymore. We all know that. Um, it's really easy to, to change your, your banking products online. You can compare everything. Um, so um, it's really us as customers who say banks what to do. Um, second thing is user experience is a key differentiator nowadays. We all also know that from our private um, Life when we are on a phone and have two apps, um, and the one has really cool features but is hard to use, then we rather end up deleting it and use an app that is um, maybe has not as many features but is really cool, easy to use, very sexy product, and this also um, drives expectations towards banks. The third thing is that new entrants disrupt the banking industry. It doesn't always have to be those big unicorns, but it can also be niche players that um, have really good products or services in a certain um, area. And um, our customers know those cool features, and this also drives expectations towards banks, right? And the last thing is that banking industry becomes more and more technology-driven. Um, we all expect a bank to be there 24-7 via mobile, via chat, via, I don't know, um, WhatsApp or whatever. And so all this leads to a, to, a, to a situation where a mindset change really is needed for us as a bank. And here open banking is the, the answer. Um, but um, what is open banking in the end? Well, uh, we did a, um, a white paper together with the University of St. Gallen. On, the white paper's name is The Future of Collaboration in Open Banking um, or in Corporate Banking. And, we started with an idea of, of open banking that I'd like to present to you guys. The first thing is that with open banking, user value is in the center of everything that we do. And to raise the value for our customer and our user is the 
origin idea of open banking. But we have four main influences here. The first thing is infrastructure. Um, if you want to be successful in open banking, you need to have an infrastructure that is highly flexible, highly scalable, and um, yeah, allows your everything that you do to, to, to be modular and easy accessible. Se second thing is data. Um, in order to be successful with open banking, you need to make your data available. That doesn't mean only your, your customer data, um, but especially the data from, from all your products and processes. In order to be able to, to mix those, um, those bits and pieces together and create new products and services for your customers. The third thing, and uh, here already mindset comes into, into place, is collaboration. And we in Commerce Bank believe that um, you cannot um, build everything on your own and be best in class here. And you maybe don't, don't want that in those fast uh, changing times. Um, so we said that it's um, key uh, to collaborate in order to be successful in open banking. And it's not only collaboration with your corporate and private clients. Um, right. Um, it's always also fintechs and partners and banks you have to you can collaborate with in order to make even cooler products that your customers love. And one thing that is really important here for me is um, that we need also a mindset uh, change um, on customer side. It's not that banks offer some products to their customers um, and say, here, yeah, you, do you want it? But it's more that um, they start building together with banks on products that they end up loving and using. Um, that is uh, you really need. And last but not least, it's culture that drives open banking. I mean the culture within a company. Um, open banking is something that is new to the banking industry, to all of us. And um, you need a culture here we, where, you, where, where the employees are motivated to try out, to make errors, to learn from those errors, but um, not to not to make them again, but but go new ways. And you need to have a, an open culture. You need to um, have a fail fast mentality, and this really is super important in order to. And this is the last step to build innovation around um, our users. And innovation is nothing else than having a highly performant infrastructure together with the right data in a collaborative way. Um, that comes together and, uh, and with a culture of innovation, of trust, of, of willingness, um, and all these four combined um, drive innovation around our users. So obviously, APIs are the enabler here, and this is uh, yeah, a low brain now since we are on the API days, um, and you know know the figure on the left hand side that an API management platform we have in Commerce Bank combines our backends, our clouds together with all the front ends, its branches, online mobile, but of course also our partners. Right, the main game or main aim for um, uh, for Commerce Bank when it comes to APIs um, is to be more modular with the products, as I as I said the slide before, to have modular products, modular processes, to be then faster, like faster time to market, faster development, um, all um, all the benefits from APIs here. And also to be cheaper. I mean, APIs once they are developed, they are there. So you just you you are cheaper when it comes to development costs, when it comes to maintenance, and. Um, and it allows us to be more integrated uh, for to our uh, customers, um, be it for uh, private customers at the point of sale, for example, in one sh in a shop, or our corporate clients uh, when it uh, comes to ERP integration of cer certain services. Yeah, and last but not least, uh, of course, we do it as a bank also to be more profitable, um, but profitable in a way where everybody is benefiting, the customers and also, also the bank. Mm. We already started 2016 with our API program, um, and of course we needed to to lay the foundation first. But since 2018, we started uh, to have live APIs, and our transformation and our um, as you can see that on the it's the the yellow line going up. Um, it really kicked off when we started to introduce agile elements in our working. And I brought to some. It's it's the first one was Scrum. We have with with those eighty people nine different cells, um, and they work in synchron Scrum flows every two weeks. Um, we changed our organization style uh, towards an agile delivery model. Um, it's 
the Spotify model where you, you have sales and product owners and, and chapters and stuff. Um, we introduced also a company-wide backlog because for a company uh, uh, with the size of Commerce Bank, um, there's way more to do um, than there are resources for. So it's really important to, to prioritize company-wide uh, where to start and what to do next. Um, we introduced um, the most renowned one here is the PI planning, um, which is the big room planning where we come together every three months with our customers and our partners and our uh, stakeholders and set up a new plan for the next three months and what to develop and everybody is aligned and everybody knows what's going on. And the last thing I'd like to highlight here is the introduce, introduction of OKRs. OKRs are, if you like, modern KPIs. And the idea here is that you set them every three months and that not management sets them, but that you set them together as a, as a team and as an, as a, as a, as an area. Uh, so, and this is extra mot motivational that uh, we found out for all um, yeah, employees in the API cluster. Um, what are our main um, targets as an API cluster? We have like like three main areas. We are a platform and a portal provider, also coming together with security standards and the sandbox, of, of, of course. Then we are a consultant and developer. Um, we consult other areas in Commerce Bank on how to build and how to run APIs. Um, and we also develop them for them if they don't have capacity here. And we are a standard setter, of course, that nobody does what they want, but that we do streamlined API development and evangelist. Because in the end, in, um, an API program, <clears throat> or if you would like to be successful with an API program, it's really important that you uh, get on board all the other uh, people working in Commerce Bank and tell them about, about the benefits and uh, of APIs and open banking and ecosystems. So evangelism is is really a thing that that uh, we started with really early, and we are still doing a lot of meetings and and sessions here. Um, let me um, also tell you what our three steps steps towards open banking are and and were. Um, we started um, firstly um, solely internally um, with the focus of, on efficiency with our APIs. We thought um, if we never did something with the API before, APIs before, we probably shouldn't op uh, start opening up to the external world, but but gain first information and, and experiences with API. So we had a lot of internal APIs that drove efficiency within Commerce Bank. Um, Especially because, I mean, we have an, a really big and um, an old grown um, IT infrastructure, and to align this and mod modulize that, APIs are really key. Secondly, we did uh, started to open up with selected users. Um, we also did that because opening up still is new to us, so we thought it might be advisable to to do it not uh, go go not the whole way, but do it with selected users. And I brought you guys three examples of what we did. And the first one is the corporate payments API. This is an API that integrates directly into the ERP systems of our clients so that they can initiate via a click um, their payments. And that drives, of course, efficiency on our um, um, corporate client side. The second example, and maybe a little more complex, is our securities API. The idea here is um, and we did that, uh, maybe just to say that in front, is uh, we did that with a subsidiary of Commerce Bank. It's the Comdirect, um, Direct Bank uh, of Commerce Bank. Um, and we did that um, um, so, so that customers can open up their securities account, can manage their securities account, can buy securities here. And this one already is a little more complex uh, since it, it combines different processes within Commerce Bank. And the last thing is uh, I, I brought to you guys is loans API. Um, we managed to fully digitize our um, loan process from beginning to end and um, make it made it available via API, um, so that we not only had used internally but also were able to have a white label solution um, as the get your credit solution, so that we offered it to a, a third party um, this process, and they are now um, having the op having the option for uh, loans or distribute loans under their own brand, get your credit. And plus, uh, we were able to integrate this process into a, 
um, credit, uh, credit comparison portal, uh, name is Smaba in Commerce Bank, so, so that we are um, have a have a more direct relationship with our customers and potential customers. And this one is really a, a complex process, um, since you not only have like customer data and KYC data, but you also have um, credit risk assessment, and you have payments um, solutions within this process. So a really complex API product. Um, and, and our experience always was to to start easy, start small, and then grow bigger. Yeah, and the third step uh, is open banking and beyond. And by open banking, we mean that we have our products or API products available on our API um, portal um, with a fully self-service uh, offering so that we are maybe not even involved um, as a cluster anymore. Um, yeah, and beyond, I mean, that is the next step, right? Um, because we are convinced that in order to stay relevant, we need to participate in ecosystems. On the left-hand side, you can see how it's how it is today, or, or mostly today. Uh, we have the traditional banking, where we as a bank interact with our customers directly, and we have a world of ecosystems. Let's say the Amazon ecosystem, where lots of players are uh, and parties are working together and create even more value when they work together. And our aim is to um, participate in those ecosystems. Um, and open banking and open APIs allow us um, to, to take this next step. Um, and again, in our white paper, we elaborated on which ways do we have, as a bank have to position ourselves in ecosystems. Um, and by the way, if you like, you can assess this white paper either via the link uh, of the, on this presentation or when you go to our uh, developer portal, there is a section uh, of the white paper. And I brought you the kind of to the to the story of, of positioning and ecosystems. Um, I brought you the three um, the three main ones. Um, now I'd like to talk a little about. Um, the first one is to be a product supplier. That means you add value in the as a bank in this ecosystem by providing your products. Next thing is that you can also act as a aggregator, that you aggregate as a bank certain services and offer them to clients, to potential clients, to partners, and to make it to make it easier to to assess them um, via, for example, Commerce Bank with a single sign-on solution. And a, a third positioning can be uh, ecosystem orchestration, meaning you are the one owning kind of the ecosystem and um, dealing with the different players and, and trying to expand it and make it bigger and even more um, important. And you can see the, the value drives and the complexity drives also. And let me maybe um, tell you one thing that we found out when it, uh, in our studies. It's not that you always have to aim to become an ecosystem orchestrator here. Um, you always have to think about what is your strategy, where are your strengths as a company, and where are you very good in. And maybe you want to become an ecosystem orchestrator in these points, um, but maybe in other points it's, uh, it's perfectly fittable if you are a product supplier or aggregator or something in between. There are lots of steps in between. Um, so, so I think that it's not important that everybody becomes an ecosystem orchestrator. It's important that you know where your strengths are and how you want to um, be successful here. Okay. Our path to the ecosystem, and that is a little also what, what Mark um, mentioned. We started, um, and we're still on it, and the journey continues, uh, build, building open APIs. Um, and we introduced a partner program lately. Um, the idea here is that we would like to partner with certain companies, with selected partners, um, to, in order to build new products, build new services, learn from each other, um, and just become better when it comes to open banking. Um, and the third step then is ecosystem participation. And why do we talk about participation? I mean, it's all, it's again the, the idea to, to gather first experiences, um, here and, and to learn. And one thing I'd also like to point out when it comes to ecosystems, that there must, that those ecosystems must be geared around customer journeys and their customer needs. So it's most important that when it comes to ecosystems, you start thinking about where are the your touch points with your customers? That could be home, could be education, could be health and insurance, can, could be B2B services. 
the, so the variety here is very big um, and you can play on. And I brought you one example um, with a little more details. It's the example of buying a new home. Um, and there are roughly 26 steps plus minus um, when you would like to buy a, a new house. And um, a bank is involved, partners, customers are involved, third parties are involved. And all those parties and all those steps combined together form an ecosystem around new home. And the idea here can be, since we as a bank have many touch points in this ecosystem, um, to make steps toward building up such an ecosystem where all the parties um, um, can contribute and benefit from each other. Coming um, closer to the end of my presentation, um, I prepared for 20 minutes. Um, I didn't think about those e this extra time I just gained. Um, open banking and um, ecosystems is really uh, a long way to go. And um, the main challenges um, we experience on our way, um, uh, I'd like to talk about this, this now for a second. Um, the first one is that you need a common understanding of existing opportunities. And this is something also coming with evangelism. Um, it's really important that you um, run around and tell everybody what APIs and open banking stand for. And only when you have this common understanding of the benefits and everybody also um, is, uh, would like to contribute here, um, then, then you are successful. Another challenge is um, that you get transparency about initiatives. In a big um, comp uh, company like Commerce Bank, um, there are everywhere good ideas um, and flowing around. And maybe um, you even don't know about some initiatives going with open banking. So it's really important to, to make sure that you have transparency about those initiatives. Another challenge is the coordination of budget and resources. I mean, they are, they are always limited. So you, may, you would like to make sure that you invest in the right things. Um, and um, the coordination here is another big challenge. Um, another challenge is the use of pragma pragmatic prototyping options. Um, we experience ourselves uh, very quickly in think thinking solutions till the very end and then trying to do the entire way at once. Um, but it's really important um, to, to start small, um, an MVP or, or a first test solution with family and friends advice. Um, and this is a challenge um, that also comes along with culture and you have to be aware of. And the last uh, challenge I, I brought is the cross-segment decision. Um, open banking and ecosystems um, is not a thing of one segment or one department. It's, uh, it spans all, across an entire company. Um, so you need, to be, uh, you need to make sure you have a place where you can have decisions on those open banking use cases, which are cross-segmental. And maybe, um, three examples of what we did um, that could tackle those uh, challenges. First thing we did is introduce a stakeholder roundtable. Um, and here are members of the board, executives, area managers, um, and they come together every three months and talk about um, open banking use cases and uh, where we should maybe more put more focus on and how we can manage to be even more su successful. And those roundtables are... Um, very productive meetings because it's not that we have a uh, have a I don't know decision overhead here, but it's more to learn from each other and to to share best practices and to really help each other. Second thing is the commitment on deliverables. I already mentioned we have a PI planning or a big room planning where we come together every three months. And one really important aspect of those meetings is that um, at the end we do a, a virtual handshake. Um, nowadays um, to commit on deliverables and everybody sticks to those commitments. And the third thing is that we introduced an aligned process process for new use cases. That sounds pretty old fashioned, um, but especially for large companies, it is very important that you have a process um, in the beginning where all the use cases come together and that not everybody does what they like, but um, that you have transparency here. Um, we hope that one day we don't need this process anymore, but for now, it's really um, worth it. Okay, let me finish with one invitation. Um, 
the timing is right. Open banking is not a trend. Open banking is, is here to stay. And it brings along new ways of collaboration. Um, and those and, and through collaboration and open banking, uh, we are able to offer new products and services always with a super customer-centric approach. And I'd like you guys to uh, in, invite you to collaborate with us, to build with us, to standardize, um, and because we think that together we can really achieve more. So please do not hesitate to contact me directly or via our portal. Um, we would really love to talk to you guys. Yeah, thank you very much. That's fantastic. Um, thanks. We'll get jump straight into, I'm glad we've got the extra time. There's a ton of things to talk about here. The um, Let's first of all, though, Pavlin's asked, what's your opinion? To what degree the other participants in the financial ecosystem trust the banks as equal partners when it goes about sharing data and business models? Do you think there's work to do for banks to uh, prove that trust if they're asking um, for, for their partners to share data? Um, I think, um, yeah, this is a very important aspect here. And uh, thanks for asking this question. I forgot to mention, obviously. Um, I think the most important thing is that our customers um, are always um, the ones who allow to share data. It's not that we as a bank um, could just take customer data and put it anywhere, but the customer always have to has the, um, the the very good feeling that he is um, the owner of his data. So we are currently working on a company-wide concept manager um, so that customers in their online banking can easily um, click on, yeah, I want to like, I'd like to share data or I don't like to share data or which data maybe. I think this is really key to, to not, um, uh, to 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 have the the trust or or the trust still of your of your customers, and one idea um, I mean it's it's in the par, far in the future. Um, it's not that we are uh, dealing with it right now, but it could also be in the future that that also there is a the benefit from each other, right? Um, so when we share data to external parties, those external parties can maybe offer better products to our customers, um, or um, we have some benefits here as a bank. So. To, to have lower lower or or even no fees for um, when it comes to um, to to account models for example when the customer allows us to use his or her, her data but yeah very important aspect and um, yeah customer always it's, is, it's, is set of this data it's an interesting question um, so uh, Pavlin's clarified he means um, uh, the partners data which is transparent to the bank and they make the business models transparent too so it's, I think it's more about, um, so if a partner is, so I mean, I guess it's getting to the Amazon issue where you've got Amazon, um, have, have got their platform. A, a retailer is on the Amazon platform and they're selling products. Amazon gets to see how many people are coming on board and buying those particular products through that retailer. And then Amazon ends up selling a um, new product that is in direct competition to the retailer's product on their platform. So perhaps I think what Pavlin's getting at is that the bank gets to see which apps the fintech is do, is building that are having some traction. What's to stop the bank from then building those um, uh, those apps, uh, similar apps? I guess. Yeah. So he's asking, would would banks? seeing banks as partners or would they see them as, you know, predators almost over that sort of thing? Yeah. How do you give that confidence okay. to your ecosystem? Okay, now I understood the question rightly. Okay, um, so the idea here really is that um, we see them as a partner because uh, we found out that um, um, that the... Uh, Development of, of new products or especially of partners or, or small companies, they are way faster than a big bank as Commerce Bank is. And they are able to have um, and, and adapt really fast in this in this particular product. So it's for us as a bank um, more beneficial to integrate this partner and to have um, cool features for our 
customers and to focus on on these on the areas where we would like to stay uh, to, ha to 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 have our main um, relevance or where we think we have a competitive advantage instead of starting building startup um, like uh, like products. Um, and, and this is re um, currently happening. I just had a call beforehand um, about um, 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 uh, interests rates clients get on their um, uh, um, on their um, current accounts, and we found out that I mean in in, in the eurozone there is not a bad a good benefit uh, or, or not a lot of interest rates flowing around, and then we are about to in, uh, integrate a partner uh, here so that our customers can also. Um, Easily switch from commerce bank online banking to to other to other banks or shift their money so that they get more interest rates on their on their money they they store at the commerce bank and yeah yep. we could build this but it's easier for both sides if we just integrate this partner absolutely that interest rate optimization it's a fantastic new sort of um, product that's coming out through. Um, the availability of open banking. I mean, if you look even at your what you showed for the um, buying a house context, you, you know, as we move to embedded mm -hmm. finance models, each one of those steps is a fintech um, opportunity, and a bank can't be building out all of those. Um, so there's no way, yeah. you know, like so. Then, but giving that confidence to your um, potential fintech partners that you know you're interested in f fleshing that out. Is there anything then in, um, I wanted to get to a couple of other questions but uh, that I had around some of your processes. We'll get to those in a sec. The, but is there anything in being able to demonstrate the end value to your custom, uh, customers that would give the um, FinTech partners that confidence? So for example, um, with the, that buying a house, are you if you're able to show that um, people were able to go through that process faster with less stress and that they're mm -hmm. able to save more, get better deals on their um, uh, housing loans or whatever. Like, is there anything through those processes that um, if you're demonstrating, if you're measuring the value to the end customer that comes from the open, uh, from an API value chain, would that give confidence, do you think, to the FinTech as well? Because you're sort of like, because then it's sort of like you're putting a stake in the ground that this is what the customer is getting out of it. So you don't want to step back yeah. from that by saying we're offering now all of those products. Yeah, sure, true, and and and, and absolutely. I mean, I mean, uh, what what the idea of, of ecosystems is not to sit in the cellar and and build this ecosystem and then big bang here it is. You always start small. And you start usually by, by partnering with a certain partner. And if you find out that your customer values the, uh, what you are doing and, and sees a benefit for, for himself so that he is willing to use it, then you start building building up new steps here. And uh, the and we had, um, and what, what open banking offers is a seamless in, uh, in integration. Um, it's not that the, I mean, nowadays a customer can also go to this other fintech and have, the, have those services. But what the idea is that a Comex Bank customer can, with his credentials, sign into this uh, other company, in, it can sign into the other company and have those benefits right away. And if we find out that there is a big usage, then we can think about the next step ahead. But it's, I mean, it's it's the, the, the main challenge at the moment. And there is such a big, um, um, there are so many possibilities for a customer to do that you really have to think about what is the added value that you create with your ecosystem. And then it's also for a bank way easier um, to just integrate a different partner um, than to build it on, on your own and then find out, okay, nobody uses that. So so it's I think it's it's both both ways actually. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Look, um so I've, 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 <laughs> I've yeah, it really does. I've got a ton more questions, but I'll have to like everyone else, I'll have to take them offline because we've finished um, the this this um this, this portion of our uh, talk, and I'm sure our audience is keen to get to some lunch and some networking in the partner village. Thanks so much, Nathaniel, and also for stepping in a little bit earlier and um, and expanding on some of your points.